Hey, what's up everyone? Stage here. And uh, you know, lately I've been thinking a lot about the beginner plants, you know, those remedies that we first start learning about when we're beginning our plant path and how sometimes it can be really easy to overlook those remedies when we move further along our herbal journey, you know, thinking about those kind of basic beginner remedies like calendula or yarrow or chickweed, those plants that are seen to be as you know, pretty mild and, you know, but really powerful and effective at the same time. But how, you know, it can be really easy in this modern day and age to get really excited about, you know, the new fancy exotic herb or the new super herb and, you know, kind of start to overlook those basic plants that we first start learning about on our herbal journey. So today I wanted to talk about a plant that is, uh, I think a really critically important remedy for us to understand. And it's one of those plants that's oftentimes kind of pigeonholed as, um, you know, a really mild, gentle remedy. Uh, it's, you know, basically a plant that sometimes I think people can really easily overlook, but this is a very versatile, very potent, very powerful remedy that I think every herbalist needs to know how to use, have available in their dispensaries. So today we're gonna to talk about chamomile beyond the tea bag. All right, so let's talk about some of the core properties of chamomile. So first off, the taste of the plant is always where I like to start. And with chamomile, we have a really nice complex flavor profile with this herb. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things about chamomile is a lot of people are like, oh, it tastes pretty sweet. Um, and I think that's oftentimes because we're really used to uh, tea bags of chamomile, which let's face it, tea bags don't have a ton of the plant in there. There might be maybe a teaspoon of the remedy in there. And of course, who knows how long that herb was harvested and dried and has been sitting in that tea bag. So quality is always an issue with tea bags. But when we're looking at fresh chamomile or freshly prepared chamomile, um, this is actually a distinctly bitter plant. Um, you know, I always like to tell people, if you really want to understand the taste of chamomile, take a, take a mason jar and fill it like halfway full of chamomile, pour boiling water over it, put a lid on it, shake it up, let it sit for 15, 20 minutes, and uh, take a sip of that. <laughs> you know, you will really see <clears throat> how bitter this plant really is. But chamomile is in this unique profile here where, yes, on the one hand, this is a bitter tonic plant. On the other hand, it's distinctly aromatic. There are a lot of volatile or essential oils in chamomile, which gives it this pungent, uh, floral, aromatic flavor to it. Um, that is always a really unique property. So we might refer to it as an aromatic bitter. And uh, we'll talk about the importance of that combination of actions in a little bit. But we also notice that underneath that bitterness and underneath that aromatic nature, there is a little bit of sweetness to this plant. <clears throat> now these tastes ultimately translate to what the main um, affinities that this plant has for the organ systems and tissues of the body. So. Uh, Anytime we have something that's bitter, uh, we're definitely talking about a plant that influences the digestive system. A lot of times when we're talking about aromatic plants, we also have a taste that is influencing the digestive system. Combine them, you've got a primo digestive remedy. So what we see with chamomile <clears throat> is that it is influencing the digestive system both as a bitter tonic in terms of its actions, as well as a carminative in terms of its actions. And this is like a formula unto itself. Uh, you know, if you look at a lot of herbal formulas for the digestive system, you'll oftentimes see bitter tonic herbs combined with carminative herbs. A, a classic pair in the physiomedicalist tradition was gentian, very bitter, and ginger, a very nice carminative. Chamomile is really cool because it has both of those properties combined as one. So the other big affinity for this plant is absolutely the nervous system. And I think this is probably the main one <clears throat> that a lot of people think about uh, as chamomile, right? You know, take some chamomile to help with sleep and help calm you down. It's really nice for children because it's pretty mild and gentle. Um, but one of the things that I always like to explain in regards to herbal medicine is that when you're looking at the properties of a plant, don't look at them in a vacuum. You have to look at 
herbal properties and see how how they overlap, how they combine, how they merge together to create the total global pattern of how that plant is healing people and what its kind of core medicinal essence is. <clears throat> so when you combine a nervous system remedy, a nervine sedative, with a bitter tonic and a carminative, what does that look like? Well, it looks like an amazing plant for nervous digestion, right? For people that maybe they get anxious and nervous and stressed out and they really feel it in their digestive system. Maybe they get gas or bloating, or maybe they get kind of butterflies in their stomach. Maybe they lose their appetite. Maybe they get excessive appetite. Regardless of what it looks like, with a remedy like chamomile combining all of these properties, we have a really, really great remedy to address digestive issues, kind of general digestive issues coupled with um, or triggered by nervous system dynamics. So those are kind of some of the main affinities that I like to think of in regards to this herb is digestive system, nervous system. And, uh, and the other thing that we have with this remedy in terms of its actions is that it is distinctly inflammation modulating. So the, as I mentioned, there's a lot of volatile or essential oils in this plant. And when you take it on uh, through steam distillation, <clears throat> you yield this absolutely stunning, like deep cobalt blue essential oil. Um, it's uh, one, of, one of two plants that I know of that yields this type of blue oil. The other one would be yarrow. And uh, that essential oil is very rich in uh, two constituents referred to, well, there's lots of constituents in there, but there's azuline and cam azuline. And these two constituents have been very well studied, showing that they are distinctly inflammation modulating and sedative to heat and irritation within the body. So you combine that with all the other actions and properties we've looked at, and now we see that chamomile not only stimulates digestion as a bitter tonic, not only does it settle excess um, nervousness and digestive symptoms related to the nervous system, not only is it a great carminative, but it's also sedating heat, inflammation, and irritation within the digestive system. So this brings it to a really nice broad spectrum of properties and support for digestive health. So that volatile nature of the remedy, right? The, the way that it has all of these essential oils volatilizes it out into the nervous system. So I tend to think of this plant as really a great gentle nervine sedative. Um, I differentiate that from the stronger nervine hypnotics in the sense that this can be used uh, throughout the day and it's not going to you know, make you sleepy or tired or dopey or anything like that. But it's just enough of a nerving property to cut that nervous edge down and keep one calm and centered and um, and not making you too tired. <clears throat> but again, specifically when that when that nervousness affects the gut. So those nervous digestive issues is to me really where chamomile shines. And so um, in that way, it has an antispasmodic action in the gut that's also associated with its carminative property. So it's gonna increase blood flow to the digestive system. It's gonna gently relax any constriction or tension in the digestive system, cramping, um, spasm, as well as excess heat, inflammation, and irritation. So really any manner of inflammatory digestive symptom, chamomile is gonna be a really great remedy for um, it's a really great remedy for just any kind of general digestive distress, dyspepsia, gas, bloating, nausea, um, constipation even, because the bitter tonic property is going to stimulate gastric secretions. Um, so this is a really super versatile plant. Um, now, shifting into the energetics, the all-important energetics. So what we see with chamomile is its influence on temperature <clears throat> is predominantly going to be cooling. Uh, we see this because A, it's a bitter tonic. Most bitter tonics tend to be cooling. And because the volatile oil, which many volatile oils typically are, are warming, but with chamomile, it's very a little bit different in that those volatile oils are actually distinctly cooling. So it's really great for excess heat patterns. And then um, it's gonna have a net drying effect there's no moistening properties to this herb. 
and then it will have a relaxant effect in terms of its um, its influence on the tone of the tissues. So cooling, drying, and relaxant. This will have a really great property for reducing an excess of the pitta dosha in uh, the Ayurvedic orientation of things. So sedating heat. Uh, it's really good at reducing excess vata in terms of it being calming. <clears throat> but there's a, kind of this dynamic with the vata dosha that we see over and over and over again with herbal remedies, which is that on the one hand, a, a remedy like chamomile reduces the tension and the nervousness, the too much wind part of vata, but it's a cooling drying plant. So it can aggravate a little bit of the coldness and dryness of vata. <clears throat> and that's where formulating it um, to help kind of balance that property simply giving it with a gently warming plant. And if someone's overly dry, putting it with a moistening plant helps to correct that, um, that constitutional dynamic with this plant. And in terms of the physiomedicalist tissue states, I like to think of chamomile as being really, really great for the wind tension tissue state. Um, so that is, you know, typically things that influence the nervous system, the musculoskeletal system. So nervousness, anxiety, uh, coupled with you know cramping tension in the mus in the musculature as well as in the mind so kind of nerves and muscles is where that wind tension tissue state tends to influence um, and it can also be a really great remedy for the heat excitation tissue state whenever there's too much irritation in the tissues uh, it's really good in that way so these are some of the core properties of chamomile looking at it through the lens of these keys of understanding an herb holistically. And uh, we're gonna jump over to Whitney because she's been growing this chamomile in the garden. We're getting ready to harvest it. She's gonna talk a little bit more about growing this plant, some of the things that she's learned about growing it. And then I'll jump back in and talk about some of the astrological and elemental correlations to this plant, uh, as well as some of the signatures and uh, some final thoughts. All right, so we just got a whole bunch of feedback from y'all that uh, folks want to hear more about herbal gardening. So that's something that I've been dabbling in, starting to get more into growing more herbs. So I'm certainly not an expert, but I just share my experience with um, with y'all here. Uh, Chamomile is in the Asteraceae family, and um, I let's see, it's a light dependent germinator. So as far as seeds go. They're really fine little um, lightweight seeds. So you'd want to sow them on a, the top of the surface of the soil. They can either be direct seeded in the garden in the fall or the early spring, or you can sow them in flats. Um, and that's what I did. I put them, I sowed them in flats in the greenhouse early this spring and then just sprinkled a tiny bit of vermiculite on top, or you can put a little bit of soil, but just, a, just enough to keep the seeds from uh, flying away while you water them. So you just want to have enough of something to keep the seeds down, but then they need to be able to see the light to be able to germinate. Um, a few years ago, I sowed a bunch of chamomile and it really didn't come up very well and didn't do very well. Um, and then this year it did, was super vigorous. So um, not sure exactly what I did differently, but um, it definitely, it was pretty, it's a pretty hardy plant, even though it's dainty and delicate, it's pretty hardy. It's native to Europe and some parts of Asia. Um, so it does well in cooler climates. We're in the Pacific Northwest, Washington state here, and it's, uh, we have a more of a cool environment. Um, it does well in the full sun and it's an annual. So you have to, um, a, a perennial would, would, uh, you'd cut it back and it'd keep coming back year after year from the same plants An annual, it's going to die once it's done flowering and seeding. Um, but then it self seeds everywhere. So it's pretty cool. Once you have, once you grow chamomile, you're going to see it pop up throughout your garden. But if you just let it self seed, it's going to be kind of sporadic where it pops up. So if you want to grow a full bed of this, like you're going to harvest, um, I recommend just sowing it every year. The the reason why I like to sow it in flats and then transplant it is just so I can have more uh, consistency if, if I'm just, it doesn't do well competing with other weeds. So you'd want to um, be weeding it and making sure that you're seeing where it's popping up if you direct sow it in the garden. Um, and it's really vigorous. It just kind of likes to do its thing and grows really well. So I love having this in the garden. It smells lovely. Um, it's early morning, so the flowers have kind of 
you can see these are these little petals are all pretty close to the plant once the the, the once it warms up and the sun gets on it, all of these petals will open up and you'll see more of a kind of array of, of petals there. But you would harvest it when it's fully flowering like this and you can just pick the flower heads off. Um, if you have a, a chamomile rake is pretty cool. It's like a berry picker and it would kind of go through and pop all these off is what it would do for you. I am still looking for one myself, but, um, so you can harvest the flowers and then it'll keep flowering. So in another week or so, you'll have a whole nother, uh, round of flowers and it'll keep doing that for about a month. So it's a pretty, um, pretty consistent harvest, which is, which is pretty nice. and that's it. All right, so uh, Whitney just shared some really great stuff about growing this remedy. And uh, I just wanna close it off here talking a little bit about kind of some of the more subtle properties of chamomile. Um, you know, one of the main keys that I like to talk about, you know, starting off with the tastes and the affinities and the actions and the energetics. And lastly, I like to talk about kind of some of the specific indications, uh, which include some of the psychological properties of this plant. And so one of the things that a lot of folks know about chamomile is that it's really great for children. And uh, one of the key indications for when this plant is really good is for, um, well, and it, it applies to adults as, as, or applies to children as well as to adults. And one of the key kind of patterns of this plant is like fussiness or like a really moody, like a moody fussiness. And we obviously we see that in children, but that can also be present in adults. And one of the main things, the way it's really specific for children is when they fuss and cry and whine for something, like they want that toy or they want that book and you hand it to them and then they just go, no, and they throw it away, right? And so it's kind of, there's this lack of appeasement, like there's this lack of um, contentment in the chamomile type where it's like, a, there's a want and a desire. And then when that is obtained, it's like, no, oh, no, that's actually not what I wanted, you know? And I think as adults, we, <clears throat> you know, I, I can think of lots of situations where adults are like that too. <clears throat> and so that's that coupled with kind of this moody, fussy, but kind of anxious and nervous and kind of never content with things is the way I think of the chamomile person. And so when we think of kind of some of the astrological indications of this plant, um, there's a couple different planets that it can be placed under. Um, a lot of folks place uh, chamomile under the planet Mercury. Um, we have this kind of feathered appearance to the plant and it's kind of light and thin and skinny and kind of airy in the way that it kind of goes up and out. It's very aromatic in its property, which is a distinctly mercurial kind of nature. Um, but the other planet that I tend to think of with this plant is Venus. And uh, one of the reasons for that is Venus is, is the great relaxant, right? Venus is what promotes this state of calm ease within the mind, within the emotions, as well as within the body. And we see that with chamomile in the way that it is a relaxant, in the way that it's gently sedative, <clears throat> in the way that it's um, easing tension and spasm within the body. Chamomile is said to be the great, or um, Venus is said to be the most anodyne or pain relieving um, of the medicinal aspects of the planets. And we see that with chamomile in the way that it reduces heat and inflammation. So it can support pain due to that, as well as the pain associated with spasm, tension, and constriction. So I like to think of it as a Venusian plant. The really feathered appearance of the leaves is also a distinctly Venusian property. You see that in mercury plants. You also see that in Venusian plants. And of course, just the beautiful smell of this remedy that is such a distinctly Venus kind of quality, that sweet kind of perfumey smell to it. In terms of its ruling element, I really think of this as an air element plant because of the way it's working through the nervous system. Uh, the air element tends to rule the lungs. <clears throat> it rules the nervous system. It also rules that wind tension tissue state. So chamomile is really great for excess wind or air in the digestive system, that bloating, gas, um, as well as spasm and constriction. So that's all air element dynamics, as well as the fact that it's so volatile. There's so many essential oils in this plant. That's also very indicative 
of the air element property. And um, that is uh, some of the some of the dynamics that we see around this plant. Just thinking through some of the planetary and elemental correspondences of this plant. And uh, we're going to be picking all these chamomile flowers and taking it down into the lab and uh, distilling some of that beautiful cobalt blue essential oil. And uh, so. With that, thanks so much for checking out this video. Hope you enjoyed the content here. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're not subscribed to our email list, head on over to evolutionaryherbalism.com where we've got tons of free resources available for you there. And uh, thanks so much for joining me. Until the next one, take care and be well.